Hey yo, what's up? It's me, Absu Habibi, and today we'll be looking at map modes, um, and specifically five map modes that I think not many people use, but they should because they are really, really good. The map mod I'm using is called the Illusionary Flat Political Map Mode. This is not how the game originally looks like. You can find it in the description down below. And no, I won't change it. I like it a lot. It looks simple, looks strategical, and not only that, it increases performance. Anyways, let's get back into the video. Five map modes you probably didn't know existed in Europa Universalis. The first map mode um, I think some of you, a lot of you actually use, and this one um, I use one of the most out of all of the map modes, and it is the simple terrain map mode. Um, so I actually have it right here on my um, the Q shortcut, which is in the bottom right corner, um, and I have my political map on W, so I can easily switch between simple terrain and political. Simple terrain basically it shows the different type of terrain all over as well as river crossings in the map. This is really useful because uh, while you're playing the game, whether it be single player or multiplayer, um, knowing where your troops are moving from which tile to which, let's say like I'm trying to attack this 5k, I should recognize when I go from political to simple terrain map mode that I am crossing a river because the river crossing is very clear in simple terrain map mode and I'm also going to be fighting on a hill. So if I don't have a higher maneuverability general than this guy, I will be taking a minus two roll on the battles and it's very simple to identify that. It's the same as if I was in an Kona and I was going to a Bruzi, um, I uh, will see here there is no river crossing, right? There's no river crossing. It would be very blue and clear, but it is a mountain. So again, it will be a minus two if we go on here. Um, and um, basically, this map mode is for uh, players who want to play more quickly. The next map mode I only recently discovered, uh, I think about like five months ago or six months ago, a chatter on my Twitch actually brought it up and there's uh, both a map mode and a macro builder for this um, that a lot of people didn't know about and this is the state edicts map mode the state edicts map mode specifically shows oh it's showing the wrong one state edicts map mode specifically shows where there are state edicts being used in your country and they're color coded to tell you what kind they are yellow being dev cost the uh, burgundy color being uh, trade power and this color being monthly autonomy change. Of course, there's other colors for all of the other ones. Um, these are just like some of the most common ones that you'll be uh, using a lot of. Uh, local trade power, especially on your capital state, should always be used because uh, the state maintenance is halved in uh, your state, your uh, capital state. Uh, good thing to remember. Uh, but anyways, uh, the entire idea is that it's very useful to see what, how, uh, um, where you have state edicts and how you're managing your country, especially when you're doing development cycles, when you're playing multiplayer. Um, you know, you could accidentally leave a uh, dev cost edict on for like 20 years. I've done that before, but there's also a macro builder for it. It's under the states tab and state edicts. Um, and it's the same thing and you can see when you put them. So uh, you can only change edicts every 12 uh, months. Um, in this case, uh, you know, you can see that I can't change any of my three edicts. And something also really cool about this map mode is that if you click on someone else, you can also see their state edicts. This next map mode is one that I find myself using more and more of, specifically during peace deals. This one is the fort level map mode. Um, this one shows you not only where every single fort is, but also what level they are. If you hover over it, you can see Rome is a level three fort, while uh, Verona is a level one fort, and it's a uh, fort right next to Brescia is a level two fort. Um, this is really useful both in single player and multiplayer when doing peace deals, because you can specifically snake out um, mountain, uh, or not mountain, sorry, just forts in general. You can snake them out the forts and you can make your next war easier. Let's say um, you're fighting France. If you snake these three mountain, these forts right here, France is basically free reign unless they build more forts because they have three forts. And if you get these three, boom, you have direct access to their capital. You have, uh, you can go to all of these lands right here with no, uh, with no fort stopping you. And you can make your next war against France super easy. Let's say you're, you're Castile, for example, you know, you get these forts, that's it. Your next war is going to be really easy. 
um, and uh, this is also really important um, in World Conquests because um, it can basically save you time. It could be the difference between having to siege three forts and sieging no forts, right? Because if you get these three forts, or maybe you get all of their forts except their capital fort, all you have to siege is their capital fort, and if their capital fort has no fort on it, um, which is the case of right here, the garrison size is 1,000, which means you only need about 11,000 men to assault that fort. Um, general rule of thumb is like uh, 11 uh, times 11 the garrison that's how many you should assault with of course you should always shift consolidate and of course you need more if there is a bigger morale difference if they have higher morale than you you're going to need more to assault a fort uh, but yeah so like if you uh, generally uh what, what i'm trying to say though is that if you snake out the forts um the next war can be super easy because all you do is go on their capital assault it boom their capital's gone instantly you have like 50 war score because they have no forts um but yeah uh i think it's a really good map mode um not a lot of people use it um really good in single player multiplayer um just a good map mode in general the next map mode we'll be looking at is manpower uh, this one is specifically to show you the manpower that is being given in each province so as you can see the greener the province is the more um the more manpower it produces and uh, the redder the province is, the less manpower it produces. Manpower in EU4 arguably is the second most valuable resource after your monarch points, your monarch points being your most valuable, then your manpower, then your money. Yes, money is not that important. Um, <laughs> you know, um, but um, the manpower map mode um, has many purposes. One could be, well, nation building. You can see what parts of your country are producing the most amount of manpower. Another is comparison in multiplayer. You can see, like, um, in this case, like, if I'm F Florence, I can see that my nation compared to my neighbors isn't that, uh, not producing as much manpower. And if I even hover over it or see like this, I can see how much manpower I'm getting comparatively. You can see that Firenze is 2.25, 2.250, uh, a thousand, and, uh, Veen is almost 3.5k. Um, this gets more valuable in multiplayer as the game progresses because you'll you'll start to see where all the green patches are. This can be used in single player again for peace deals, uh, knowing uh, what provinces after you've snaked all the forts, you could start snaking all of their manpower, high manpower provinces, so they have less manpower in the next war. The last map mode is going to be da -da -da -dum, the trade value map mode. Uh, and if I can just remember where I put it, there it is. The trade value map mode and this is a map mode that i feel like out of all of the ones is probably the most rare people like just don't know exists uh, this map mode is in very good again mostly um mostly to for peace deals yeah like um the entire uh like you can basically looking at this you can know exactly where to ruin someone's economy um, if especially a country like Mamluks, which is very, very focused around a trade income, you can just figure out what provinces to take from them in order to uh, basically just rip out his entire income. Um, if you hover over, it's again the same with uh, the uh, manpower where red is um, like red provinces are low trade value and uh, the green provinces are the high trade value. Um, it's not like the shades though. For some reason, there's like yellow and blue in this map mode. Um, actually, wait, no, blue is because they're zero because they're gold mines. So as you can see, the blue ones are all the gold mines of Europe. You can see uh, that, yeah, all the gold mines have zero trade value because of course their good has no trade value. But um, th this is a really important map mode. Um, not only to just to see where to snake and where to eat provinces and how to make peace deals, uh, which you could argue, by the way, I, I know a lot in this video, I've been talking a lot about peace deals, but uh, you could argue that uh, peace deals are a very important skill of EU4, knowing how to do good peace deals, both in single player and multiplayer. I think a lot of new players, uh, you know, uh, some of you guys out there, you know, you just like to make nice borders and that's your highest priority. That's totally fine. But um, if you're trying to like world conquest, you're trying to do an achievement fast, you're trying to maybe you're in multiplayer, you're trying to kill a player. Um, I think a lot of newer players, they don't know really how to do the peace deal. And again, all of these map modes um, put together really can tell you all you need to know about a nation, right? 
So if we go back to the one we were just talking about, uh, the trade value. With the trade value map mode, you can see where all of France's trade uh, is being controlled. Their local trade power is coming from Paris, Nemours, Lyonnais, and Montpellier. Meaning if you take these four provinces, you could probably take all of their trade income, most of their trade income. The next one that we were talking, the last one we're talking about, manpower, you can see where their manpower is focused. In this case, the manpower is up here and then there's another cluster down here. You're, there's no way you can take this in one war, but understanding this, you can know which ways to snake in order to hurt them the most, take the most provinces that have the most manpower. Then the one we were talking about that before that is the fort level, which is arguably the most important in player wars, um, maybe less important in single player. It will save you time though, but in uh, player wars, very most important map mode, you can know where exactly their forts are and you can take their forts. So either they are forced to spend money on building new forts or um, the next war is going to be super easy for you, right? Because they're not going to have any forts at all. Um, and knowing all of this information about those three map modes, um, um, you can basically understand every country in EU4. Um, you And of course, the state edict, you know, you can get more details about how they're managing their state. But um, with all that information, you can figure out all you need to know. And also you can figure out how, what is the most effective way to get the best peace deal against them, both multiplayer and single player. Um, I hope you learned something from this video. If uh, you think there is another map mode that a lot of people don't know about and you think people should use or you use a lot, let me know down in the below in the comments. Let's start talking about it. Anyways, uh, that's it. See you later, guys.